Mastering How to Bleed. A car's cooling system. Burping technique. Ever felt like your car's got a bad case of the hiccups, like it keeps overheating for no reason, leaving you stranded on the side of the road hotter than a hibachi grill in July? Well, fear not. Gearheads and grease monkeys alike, because Car Computer Exchange is here to save the day. What's going on, Internet fam? Welcome back to Car Computer Exchange, your one-stop shop for keeping your ride running smooth and cool. Literally. Today, we're tackling a common culprit behind overheating engines. Air trapped in your cooling system. Yeah, it's like your car chugging down a giant air bubble smoothie, and let me tell you, that ain't good for its insides, but worry not because we're about to teach you a simple fix called burping your cooling system. No surgery required, just a little know-how and maybe a rag to catch a few drips. So buckle up and get ready to become a master mechanic, at least when it comes to burping your car. Cars can be finicky beasts sometimes. One minute, you're cruising down the highway with the windows down, singing along to your favorite tunes, and the next your dashboard is lighting up like a Christmas tree, and the temperature gauge is hotter than your ex's dating profile. Yikes. Often the culprit behind this overheating drama is air trapped in your car's cooling system. Think of it like your car chugging down a giant air bubble smoothie, not good for its insides. But fear not, gearheads and grease monkeys alike. Today we're here to show you a simple fix called burping your cooling system. No surgery required, just a little know-how and maybe a rag to catch a few drips. By the end of this video, you'll be a master mechanic, at least when it comes to burping your car. Tools and prep. Before we dive in, let's gather our trusty sidekicks. Coolant. This magic elixir keeps your engine nice and cool. Check your car's manual for the right type and mix it with distilled water according to the recommended ratio, usually 50 50ths. Safety gear. Goggles and gloves are your friends here. Coolant can be irritating, and a hot engine is, well, hot drain pan. This goes under the radiator to catch the old coolant. Think of it like a bucket for your car's spit-up. Funnel. This little guy makes refilling the system a breeze. No spills allowed. Rags. For cleaning up any spills and catching drips from the bleed screws. We'll get to those later. Car manual. This is your car's Bible. Refer to it for the location of the radiator cap, bleed screws, and any specific instructions for your car. Safety first. Remember, a cool engine is a happy engine. Always let your engine cool completely before you start tinkering with the cooling system. Draining the coolant. Now that we're prepped, let's drain the old coolant. Think of it like flushing out the toxins. Consult your car's manual to locate the drain plug on the radiator. Place your trusty drain pan underneath and slowly loosen the plug with a wrench. Be careful. The coolant might still be warm. Let most of the coolant drain out. You can cut to a funny montage here if you want to keep things light. Maybe your car gurgling dramatically as it coughs up the old coolant. Once it's done draining, tighten the plug securely. Filling the system next up, we're filling the system with fresh coolant. Locate the coolant reservoir, which is usually a translucent plastic container under the hood. Be careful when removing the cap. There might be some pressure built up. Now, using your funnel, slowly pour in the coolant mixture you prepared earlier. Keep an eye on the reservoir's fill level indicator and stop once you reach the recommended level. Here's the secret weapon in our arsenal. The burping technique. Air pockets trapped in the cooling system can prevent proper coolant circulation and lead to overheating. Burping helps get rid of those pesky air bubbles and ensure smooth coolant flow. All right, everyone, mid-video check-in time, hands up, if your car has ever sounded like a malfunctioning tea kettle on a bad day. Yeah, I thought so. Don't worry, gearheads. We're almost done with the draining and filling part. But before we move on to the magic of burping, let me know in the comments below. What's the most outrageous overheating story you've ever experienced? Did you end up stranded on the side of the road in a blizzard? Or maybe had to resort to using your engine as a makeshift hot tub? Share your carnage stories in the comments, and we'll pick the wildest one to feature at the end of the video. Now let's get back to burping that bad boy. Alright gearheads, buckle up because we're about to perform some carapuncture. 
Just kidding, it's not that dramatic. Although some might argue working on cars can be an adventure. The burping process is all about coaxing those pesky air bubbles out of the cooling system. Think of it like helping your car burp up its lunch after chugging down that air bubble smoothie. Here's where things get interactive. Grab your camera, because we're going to walk through this step by step with you. First, with the engine still off, gently squeeze the radiator hoses. Feel for any soft spots or unusual resistance. That could be a sign of trapped air. Now, let's locate the bleed screws. These are tiny valves usually found on the radiator or heater hoses. Your car's manual will be your best friend here, showing you the exact locations. Place a rag under each bleed screw to catch any drips. Because hey, even the best mechanics get a little messy sometimes. Ready for the magic? Here's the deal. Slowly loosen one bleed screw at a time, but be careful not to go Rambo on it. A quarter turn is usually enough. Watch the coolant flow. Once you see a steady stream appear, with no air bubbles, that means the air is on its way out. Tighten that screw back up nice and snug. Repeat this process for all the bleed screws, following the order recommended in your car's manual, because trust us, there's usually a specific order for a reason. Filling and final touches. All right, with all the bleed screws tightened, it's time to fire up the engine. But before you do, crank up the heater on high. Why? Because the heater core is part of the cooling system, and this helps circulate the coolant throughout the entire system, pushing out any remaining air bubbles. With the engine running and the heater blasting, keep an eye on the coolant level in the reservoir. If it starts to drop, don't panic. Just slowly add more of the coolant mixture you prepared earlier until the level reaches the recommended mark on the reservoir. Let the engine run for a few minutes, keeping a watchful eye for any leaks, because a leak is the opposite of cool, literally. Also, monitor the temperature gauge. It should stay within the normal operating range. Here's a top tip. After the engine has been running for a bit, gently squeeze the radiator hoses again, just like we did earlier. If you feel any softness or resistance, it might mean there's still some air trapped. In that case, simply repeat the burping process on the bleed screws until you're confident all the air bubbles are out. And that's it, folks. Your car's cooling system should be nice and burp-free, ready to keep your engine running cool and happy for miles to come. So there you have it, gearheads. Your car is officially burp-free and ready to conquer the road without any overheating meltdowns. Remember, a happy engine is a cool engine, and a happy car owner is one who subscribes to Car Computer Exchange. Hit that subscribe button and smash the notification bell so you never miss out on our car care tips and tricks. And hey, if your car is still throwing a tantrum, leave a comment below with the symptoms and we'll do our best to diagnose the problem. Until next time, happy wrenching.